What's up guys, Frank Macaluso here from Garage Holic giving you another episode of the E30 M3 restoration series. Now, in the last episode, we removed both the tail panel and the lower windshield cowling. We, we drilled out all those spot wells. Take a look up in the description right there. You can see a link to that old video if you wanted to see how I removed that stuff. In today's video, we're going to be reinstalling those two items. Now on the rear, what we need to do is pour 15 a lot of things before we put in and start welding, but we're gonna focus on the front first. And on the front lower windshield cowling, we need to stamp in the VIN number. So we've created a backing for it and we've got our stamping tool and my, my good friend Dan is going to help me out and give me a little bit, a couple pointers on how to effectively stamp this onto the lower windshield cowling without deformation and with positive identification of the VIN number even after the primer, the paint, and the clear coat is applied. All right guys, let's take a look at the VIN number, let's take a look at the stamping tool, and let's get right on into it. What we have here our stamping tool, it's a 3 8 inch or nine millimeter tall. They have all different types of sizes, they have different fonts as well, but this is an aerial font this is 3 8 inch high, which is very, very close to the existing VIN number size. The only thing that we won't be able to replicate are the little BMW insignias that's stamped on on either side of the VIN, but that's okay, my customer is okay with that. So what we have is we have to stamp the VIN, we have to provide a good backing for that VIN as we're stamping. So the idea is to use a flat piece of mild steel as a good back. And to allow the imprint from the stamp to actually permeate through the metal and make a really nice, good um, uh, letter insignia is to use Lexan. Now, the Lexan is hard enough to really provide a really good backing, but still soft enough to allow that imprint to seep through and get the depth that we want out of a good professional stamp. So this is the backing of the, the panel that we're going to be uh, stamping. So we have a mild a piece of mild steel is going to end up getting placed right like that. And then this guy will be placed above that. Now, the idea is that we put this right on and hold it really good with one hand. And then the other person will end up doing the actual stamping. So this would be actually pretty easy and iterative once we get it down pat and then just go through and cycle through the VIN number. shortcomings here but overall I think we did a really really good job you needed a steady hand so Dan was really there to help me in the clutch here getting this steadied and sitting on a really good backing pad so that I could just take the time I needed to stamp it and I stamped the VIN really well I got a lot of good penetration it's kind of a little bit misleading as it sits right here because there's no paint on it so when the paint and the clear coat are applied it'll actually um, remove a lot of the metal that you see here that is the result of the imprinting itself. It took the coating off of this black piece and it actually shows the, the VIN. So the VIN number will be a little bit more subdued when we actually go ahead and paint this thing. Um, but I do have everything except the little BMW insignias on either side of the VIN number and I think that my customer is okay with that. So other than that, I think we're in really good shape to start taking this puppy and putting it on the car. So now we've got our panel basically ready to install. As you can see, I pour 15 the entire inside of the tray, except of course the places that I'm gonna end up welding. But this thing is basically ready to set in a line and then we need to start using a wire brush to clean up these mating surfaces, make sure it's a nice clean opportunity for welding and then we start laying our tacks down.
right, so I think the hard part is over here. As you can see, I did tack welds. This is all that you really need on this, that corner, that corner, and then all up through here, which is obviously gonna get all grinded down. I, I need to continue finishing up this bead here. And then I started drilling holes into these two panels. Now, as you saw, maybe not directly, but I did drill only through the first one and not through the second one. And that allows me to make a really nice spot weld right into the hole. And it's a good clean piece of metal that I can weld right into and not have splatter. This, this coating, I needed to obviously grind away in order to get a good coating. But yeah, um, that's what I'm doing here. So basically I'm going to use my vice grips and, and uh, crimp on either side of these welds just to make sure that I have good adhesion between the two pieces before I weld them and then just weld all the way up and along uh, along the side there so as it stands right now after I'm done with that then it's just a matter of grinding everything down grinding everything down and then seam sealing and cleaning as needed So after a couple beads of weld, a couple layers and grinding, it is done. This is the most important part of this entire project here because this is the transitional side from the A pillar over to the lower windshield cowl. And this transition needs to be very, very smooth and you have to minimize your body filler. Now I did not perfect this. I know that I am not a body expert, so I am going to give it to my body guy and he is going to completely smooth all of this out. But all of the welds are basically completely grinded down and uh, I got all my tacks grinded down. All of these guys have been grinded down and you can see how straight and narrow this edge is. Same thing for over here, as you can see, I grind down all of those spot welds. So everything is completely welded up now. So I wanna clean it up, I wanna pour 15 it, and then the body guy can do whatever he wants to do afterwards because I don't wanna give this to him after it will rust. I'm telling you, it will rust just by it being in the air because there's humidity in the air and the air from the humidity, or the water from the humidity will make this uh, brown within a couple of days, especially in my climate. Now, setting up for the rear is very, very similar in that you need to prep both surfaces with uh, the wire brush before you do anything. And by that, I mean you need to ensure that all of the mating surfaces are clear of any of the coating that they put on the metal, including here and along the back side to make a really good weld. So let's take this guy, let's fit it up, and let's start clamping things down and fitting it up see how things work out. So now we got the panel kind of lined up, pretty roughly lined up, you can see the, uh, the line right there. I'm gonna be laying small tacks of, throughout the entire thing just so I don't warp it and I get it set in place. I wanna get the taillights installed as well just to make sure that the taillights are gonna look good. This part is a little bit squirrely but there's nothing you can't fix with metal. So I'm not too concerned about that area. Um, this overlapping joint looks really good here. So it goes all the way up and goes all the way up to here and then we're gonna be laying uh, weld all across inside of here. So, you know, we're probably just gonna end up putting like tacks and then fill in the rest with seam sealer because, you know, you don't really don't need that much weld in order to hold it better than it would have had you not had all weld in there. And that's how BMW did it from the factory too. So it's important. So you see these, these welds here, this guy, there's a perfect plug weld right there for that. You got three plug welds over here. Um, and uh, so this should be pretty easy. 
Looking at the back side, you can see that there's tons of opportunity here to weld this guy up really, really good to those, to those spot welds. And again, we'll seam seal the whole thing and pour 15 in so it looks like it was OEM from the back. All right, all the tacks have been uh, tacked. All the welds are good to go. Um, we still have to fine tune all this and, and weld all this and clean it up, of course. But all the tacks have been basically set down below and down into this ridge. What I have not done on either side is the inside here, which I need to do, and the inside down below, right, where those lower in, inward ones are right here. Those are the ones I need to do as well. And then I have to do it on this side as well. You can see all of that right down there that needs to be tacked on. So, but if I, I mean, if I remove this, this panel, this panel's in. This panel is in and good. And the taillights seem to line up really well. I was a little bit concerned about this area here having a higher edge, but I actually, I was able to finagle it a little bit and get it to work. And the taillight fits on without any obstruction. Um, to the threads on these holes. I know that's a common thing for E30s is when you try to put the taillights in and out, the threads kind of get binded up on these holes, but not anymore. This is actually in good shape. So yeah, we got to finish up all this welding and grind it all down just like we did on the front. Um, and then we got to get all the welds along here and along the frame rails. But other than that, we're in good shape. So let's start welding away and go from there. For seam sealer, I recommend a brushable seam sealer, 08656, and using a nylon bristled brush so that the seam sealer does not uh, disintegrate the, brus the bristles. This is an excellent brush to use, and the bristles are quite strong here, so you can actually um, get some really good penetration and almost a factory style type of layout of the uh, seam sealer here. And the reason I wanted to do this is to explain to you that there's a time and a place for seam sealer. If we're gonna be bringing a car to a body guy who's gonna end up media blasting this car like we will, putting, me putting 3M seam sealer on certain locations is not prudent, right? So we won't, don't wanna really put seam sealer on this area here because that is where we're gonna end up having him do body work and smoothing all that out. You can't really put body filler over seam sealer because of the rubberized nature of the seam sealer itself. So you wanna put the seam sealer under and around the welds that will not be getting any body work done, such as down in here underneath as well and on the back sides of the welds. On the front sides of the welds, I'm going to be letting my body guy fine tune all that so it looks picture perfect. And one final note about the seam sealer. This stuff basically dries in the exact same shape that you leave it. So when you remove this lid, you can see that this lid is kind of looking like this and, uh, and it's kind of like a gooey mixture. It will um, harden and solidify to a rubbery texture in the exact same form that you leave it. So when you brush it on, you gotta ensure that as you're brushing it on, that is the way it's going to dry unless you change its shape and make it look as OEM as possible. And this brush is going to allow us to do that. Underneath the rear skirt, this is the before, and here's the after. Completely seam sealed. So all of the seam seal has been done. Um, I did not do any exterior seam sealing. That's all gonna be pour 15 anyway. And then the body shop guy will take care of all the fine tuning with the welds and inside of here and all that to make it look um, exactly the way that it should. As you can see, I did all the seam sealing on the inside. So this is basically done. And, uh, and on the front, I also seam sealed as well. And that's done too. 
So what I wanted to do one more time is just pour 15 over all that after it dries. So after that's done, um, it, the pour 15 will make, kind of make it look a little bit more profesh. Um, even though the body guy is going to probably end up be blasting most of the car, um, I'm going to try to instruct him about what I've done so far, and hopefully that'll lower the amount of bee blasting that he has to do um, because I've already revealed and fixed all of the rust on this car. So hopefully the bee blasting will go really smoothly. But for now, let's pour 15 and move on from there. guys that just about does it for this episode what a lot of progress we made in the last two episodes all of the body work on this thing is presumably done remember this car is going to end up going to get completely blasted um, before it gets a fully new black paint job diamond schwartz 181 so my name is frank macaluso guys thanks so much for watching and learning a couple things as i was actually learning about body panel replacement going through this process myself hopefully this thing will stand the test of time i have a good feeling that it will so that's about all i have for today stand by in the next episode as we continue to strip this down take the doors off and start working on the doors and of course Get this thing ready to get out of this garage. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I'm at, my name is Frank. I'm out of here. Later.